Here with Washington State women's basketball head coach Cammie Etheridge. Coach, your team was handed a 51-44 loss to USC today. Uh, just opening comments, and we'll open the floor for questions. Yeah, I mean, I just want to give a ton of credit to USC. That is a, a, a unique team, a team that we haven't played, you know, against this year. Big, strong, long, athletic. It was really hard for us to gain an advantage of in running our stuff and setting screens and certainly – trying to attack them off the bounce. They were just kind of quicker than us and far superior in some of those situations. And we didn't really have a good answer for them getting us out of rhythm and, and uh, again, trying coming up with a, some way to, to gain an advantage. And that's a credit to them. Um, and I think you, 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 USC and UCLA are similar in how they guard, and it's going to be a real challenge for us to get ready to, to play another team that – that plays that kind of aggressive D. So credit to them. I'm disappointed. I, I, you know, didn't like how we came out of the third quarter. I didn't like how we started the game with four turnovers. Um, so I think there's a lot of points out there and a lot of plays that, that, that we kind of self-inflicted some of our own pain. But um, that's not taking anything away from, from what USC did to us. Andrew Quinn, Krem2 in Spokane. Coach, uh, you just mentioned coming out of the third quarter there, they went on that big run to open up the lead. Just what were they doing or what did you see differently out of them and, and what happened on, on offense in that run that you guys couldn't get uh, shots to go down? You know, we just tried some different things and, and we couldn't well, I, I, I'm really skeptical. I don't really want to say too much because I, I feel like if I watch the film, it's going to be – it may be something completely different. It may very well be I made horrible play calls and, and we made some really bad decisions on what we were running. Um, that's probably what it was more than anything. But, you know, even with that run that they make, they score 51 points against us. So it's it wasn't it, – they got a little hot, just like we got into a, a little bit when we amped up our pressure a little bit. We we created some baskets against them. Um, again, that's the – I don't like how we came out, but we have to handle adversity and handle uh, some runs and getting down. I thought we did a, an okay job of that, but we just never – we never had anything that we could go to that created much of an advantage. And so, again, it's just a one-on-one -on -one game. And, and our, do you have – better players than they do by and and I think we did a good job on them I think we made the game pretty hard for them to score 51 points and win is is um you know again I think I think we did enough defensively we just didn't do enough offensively and and that has a lot to do with them in, in the fourth quarter there they hold you scoreless for the first five minutes and then you went small and were able to force uh, several turnovers, get, and then a couple big shots from AT and Tara get you right back into the game. Just w what was that decision making like to go small there? And then how, how was the team able to respond after not being able to score for that much time? Yeah, I mean, I do think there's still things that we have to figure out as a coaching staff that we have to have an answer for different ways that people guard you and and I just got to the point where no fault of our bigs no fault it's just our guards didn't get us into offense where we want it they got us out of rhythm they made us start offense earlier than we wanted to our timing was off our rhythm was off it was taking a long time to get us into stuff and then if you don't create a shot at the end of that then you don't get anything it's it's not because of our post it was more and just felt like it was a game where we needed to match their quickness and attack them a little bit more with ball handling and and try to get some open court stuff and and that's what happened we we created a little bit more um you know opportunities for us and made them pay maybe a little bit for some of their uber aggressiveness in the back court and um and you know and i but i like the fact that we can go small sometimes and still be okay on the defensive end and um but again, I think we also need to come up with and figure out when our point guard can't dribble it up and enter us in offense, you know, Tara's got to be able to do it and we got to know what we're in. I mean, it was just so spotty. And um, sometimes our four would bring it up, Ula would bring it up, and it would take us a while to get into stuff. So those are the things that I think we can really improve on and, 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 and have a more of a calming effect when teams do this to us. 
And what did you see from AT tonight? She leads you guys in scoring. She was flying all over the court. Just talk a little bit about her game. Just super happy she's back. You know, she and our training training staff did an amazing job getting her back off of a pretty severe ankle. Um, you know, she's she's really good, and she handled the ball predominantly. You know, this is probably a, a team and athleticism that she hadn't seen. So she's really responded great to everything that's happened. And, and obviously, I think she's she can, you know, we wanted her to shoot a little bit more. But uh, I think there's things about this game that we can clean up and help her, uh, you know, when we see them again. Do you foresee having Charlize back on Sunday? No, I really don't. I don't. But soon. And then my last question, just what did you do differently on Sissoko in the second half? You hold her to just four points, and they weren't really able to get her the ball as much as they did in the first. Well, again, Sissoko hadn't been on the court for a little bit. So, um, um, you know, you'd think she'd be a little bit rusty, and uh, she wasn't in that first half. You know, she's just a smooth player that can hurt you a lot of different ways and probably gave her a little bit too much comfort and room when she got the catch. Obviously, she's very difficult off the bounce as well. I think our players were a little bit more worried about that than just her ability to shoot it. Um, again, a really good player, uh, but proud of how our team responded and, and guarded her and overall how we guarded their entire team. Sam Taylor, Daily Evergreen. Um, obviously, you never want to be without a star player, but mm -hmm. you spoke to the uh, first two Pac-12 or the the first two Pac-12 games without Charlize, and how that you were hoping that that would kind of help the team grow and develop. Um, how did you, how did the team obviously not getting a win, but what how has the team grown um, without Charlize in, in this week? Well, I think this is a great example of uh, the need for guards. I mean, guards and, and even even bigs, bigs being able to handle the ball good enough because you don't know who. The best. I mean, I, we didn't want to have AT go against Williams the entire day full court. I mean, that was their player that could really create a lot of havoc if we did that to her. So you need off guards and 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 so not having Charlize, who's a real primary defend uh, offensive player and and ball handler for us, I think clearly put a lot more pressure on everybody else on the court. And I think you saw it and. You, you know, just from how we turn the ball over and just our comfort level of handling their pressure. So the beauty of it is we'll have her back soon, uh, but it doesn't help us today or Sunday. And, you know, quite frankly, I think it's a great situation for Tara, you know, going forward. Not that she can improve her handle on to, by Sunday, but the mindset – of what it takes and yo what she's going to have to do for us grace's minutes were great she came in and really handled the ball you know ula knowing that she has to do more sometimes in bringing the ball up you know those are the kinds of things that i think when charlie's comes back if if some of that load is off of her and there's more comfort from those other players that's why i think it'll make us better so what better way to to test us again is play another great team in, in UCLA and see if our if we do a little bit better job of getting us into offense. And uh, Grace Sarver seemed to lead the way with, with steals of three. I guess, what did you see from her game tonight? Well, I get the exact same thing every single day Grace walks into the gym. She's consistent. She's a hard worker. She knows the scout. She there's You never have to talk about effort with her. She's just – she's – She's everything you want your program to be about on and off the court. So proud of her and, and, you know, may have some limits, but doesn't try to over, you know, do more than she's capable of. And again, her, all she wants is us to win and she's going to do everything she can to help us make that happen. And how do you help a player develop or grow upon a shot that they're usually pretty good at? You know, Hannah, one for seven, I believe, from three. I guess, how do you help Tedder shoot better from beyond the arc? <laughs> uh, play somebody else, maybe. No. You know, uh, there were a couple of chances I thought she had a chance to shot fake and, and move to the side. Again, the best thing that can happen for players is to just get a taste of this kind of length and the athleticism and how, the, how people – you know, zero in and guard you specifically. We have to do a better job of screening. She has to do some, a little bit of adjustment and, you know, not, I think she probably got two or three blocked, you know, maybe not getting those blocked would, would have, you know, but, you know, our shots comes from a little low and, and these guys can come from a long way and block shots. So um, she's got to make a little bit better decision and we got to do a better 
to get her some shots. But even even the threat of her on the court helps us or should help us run better offense than we did tonight. Um, Luke Westfall, so Daily Evergreen. Um, I'm wondering just a little bit more on Estera. Uh, you talked about how you wanted her to shoot more. And it seems like a lot of her best games, or at least most efficient games from the field, have come in games where she has an expanded role closer to 38, 40 minutes, uh, like even in the two losses against Utah and Colorado tonight, obviously. Do you feel like she is finding more success when she has an expanded role and is really allowed to go out there and kind of run the show? Or do you think that she has that talent all the time, but just when she gets more minutes, it's just more obvious. Well, clearly, I mean, those that you mentioned are games where Charlize isn't on the floor. And so it, it's the, the, the way the world is dumped on her when Charlize isn't on the floor. I don't think it's an either or. I think she's growing leaps and bounds for a freshman. I think she's adjusted to this game. I think she's picks up our offense and knows what she needs to do and has the skill set to do almost anything, you know. And, you know, she she kept us in it offensively. Just have to have a little bit more around her. And, and I, I would tell her, welcome to Charlize's world sometimes, you know. Not enough around you. And, and again, I think th these should be confidence boosters for her so that when a, a great player comes back on the court, she, she – she can really, you know, not feel so much pressure to be perfect. I think she really wants to be perfect for us. And, and again, it's a hard team. They're really good at, at speeding you up and, and confusing you a little bit. And, and you, you think you have a shot, so you pick it up, and now you're in trouble. Or you, you don't think you have a shot when you really did, and you're dribbling it all over the place, and now you've over-dribbled. So, that's all the things that I think a, a good defensive team does to, to a point guard, but I, I don't think I can complain about her game and, and her growth and, and what she'll be for us you know, the rest of this year. Also, um, both teams under 30% from the field and both under 30% from th uh, under 32% from three. Um, and it also felt like in this game there was a lot of turnovers, but a lot of which came from things like travels, illegal screens, things of that nature. Would you attribute the low scoring and low percentages more to just sloppiness and carelessness or great defense on both sides? Well, I would say, you know, if you look at U USC, they're not scoring a ton of points, but they're really holding people down. I mean, this was Stanford's point production, 44 points. So they're really good, and I think they make the game – hard they make it hard you're going to may have to make hard twos against them or you're going to have to be exceptional somewhere maybe in the post or exceptional from the three-point line but they they're a really good defensive team so I'm proud of how our team responded defensively sometimes it is just that way again I don't think we had I think we had some open looks I, I can remember three layups kind of unguarded that we missed that you go gosh that that would that could have changed the game they probably had some too but um you know, you can't. They all can't be perfect. We run offense five on zero, oh and it's perfect. You know, and it's clean, and everybody's happy. And then you get pushed and shoved, and you don't get to your spots, and you don't, you don't come off sep and have separation. And then what happens to you? And that's what they make you do. You got to play beyond that first thing or first action in in what your offense is trying to produce. And quite frankly, that's the game is. You know, who's got better players when everything breaks? Who's got better players to go create and either for themselves or someone else? And, you know, our best creator isn't on the floor right now, and, and we got to get other people to step up into that spot. And, and then when she gets back, maybe we'll be a better team. All right, Coach, we appreciate your time. We'll talk to you after Sunday's game against UCLA. Appreciate it. Thanks, Until guys. Then, go Kooks. Thanks for the fans. Go Kooks.